Welcome into War Chant TV. We're outside of Doe Campbell Stadium. You might not be able to see Doe Campbell Stadium right now because we've got some sun issues. The sun was not co cooperating with Aslan's shot. Hey, it's so fine. You know, this looks like a college campus, right? Trust us. Doe is over Doe that Cam way. Doe Campbell Stadium. Uh, we had actually had some media availability today, which is kind of rare in uh, early to mid uh, January. Uh, Mike Norvell now has his entire coaching staff in place, 10 assistant coaches. Uh, a ton of other support staff and strength coaches, mm -hmm. and he wanted us to meet him. Yeah, which is pretty cool. It's a it's a little bit different, a little bit different approach than what we've probably seen, probably since Coach Bowden was here. Um, you know, it seems like Mike Norvell, from talking to him a little bit, he really does want his program to be a little bit more accessible, right? Because it's good for the the fans to hear more about his team. It's good for the media to be able to do their job. But more importantly, it sounded like he really wants his coaches to have the opportunity to talk to the media and talk. Talk about themselves, not yeah. just kind of be hidden in offices. Well, and he made a good point when uh, when he was talking to us. He's like, look, you know, the first time when he interviewed for the Memphis job, he was so thankful that Todd Graham at Arizona State had let him talk um, after games, before games, during practice, after practices, all throughout his career because he thought that got him ready for the job interview. And he said specifically that one of the things that the Memphis uh, administration told him that they liked so much was, was watching how he handled questions after a loss early on in his career. And that was on YouTube where they could go and find those clips. And look, you know, people hear us talk about media access and they think it's all about, oh, it's look, man, understand if practices are open, that means yours truly has to get up at 7.30 in the morning and go watch a football practice for two and a half hours. That's not the best, to, I'm not, overly excited about maybe that aspect of my job but it gives us a chance to it, it gives you a chance more more accurately it gives you a chance to know the program better that's what i think sometimes get lo gets lost in the whole access arguments you get to know your program better you get to know these players better and these coaches better and i think that's that's a win-win and that's a net positive for everyone involved yeah so i think that's going to be uh, an interesting change we'll kind of see how that develops uh, but he met with us today he's going to meet with us again before spring practice yeah. to kind of kind of lay out some of the ground rules of how that would work, us having a little bit more access to practice, things like that, that you'll be able to follow along at warchant.com. Uh, but then we also got to talk to some of the assistant coaches who are on, on staff now. Uh, really, all of them were available. You talked to Alex Atkins and yeah. you talked to Dillingham again and, right. and Adam Fuller. Um, I got to speak to TJ Rushing and the new director of operations, Bruce Warwick. Not director of operations, excuse me. Chief, Chief of, of staff. staff, which is a really a whole new position. So he talked about that. I'll have a story uh, coming about that, what his role is going to be as chief of staff. Uh, any big takeaways from talking to the assistant coaches today? Well, you know, a big takeaway, I talked to Fuller, who worked with Atkins uh, at UTC back in 2012, and I talked to Dillingham about Atkins. And look, when you're talking about Florida State football, the biggest question mark, and has been for three or four, five, eight years now, is the offensive line. Will it ever become a dominant force or a good force again? And uh, talking to Dillingham, he's like, look, we, he goes, when did, I was like, when did you first hear about Alex Atkins? And he goes, well, we're at Memphis. And I remember he goes, the Tulane offensive line got so much better from one year to the next that he goes, he said, li literally after a game, I Googled Tulane offensive line coach. I was really genuinely uh, curious. And then he said, oh, it's Alex Atkins. And then he said, this past year, when this, when this job became available, he was talking to uh, Will Healy, is that the coach yeah, at yeah. Charlotte? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I kept hearing all these things about how good Charlotte, how well Charlotte had played, how good they had played, and they had gotten twice as good in almost every category. And he's like, okay, well, who are they? Who's their offensive coordinator? Well, it's Alex Atkins again. So they came by it honestly, you know what I mean? Like this was a guy that had impressed them years ago. Adam Fuller had also told him that this was a guy they should think about hiring. And then when, they, when he had the interview with Norvell and he had the interview with Dillingham, apparently he blew him away. So really sharp guy and a nice guy and I think man all these guys that we've talked to you're all gonna like hearing from them they're sharp guys they're bright guys they're engaging Alex Atkins was really personable um, so is Dillingham obviously he's a mile a minute so the I, I just think it's it's gonna be a it's a new day for the Florida State program hopefully we all hope it translates to what happens happens on the field but you're just gonna I think everybody's gonna feel a little bit more connected to this, these players and these coaches yeah, we, I actually talked to Atkins a little bit uh, because we have a mutual friend that uh, we wanted to talk to him about. But he, one of the things he mentioned was one of the challenges for offensive lines in general is lack of continuity and yeah. how, how much of that. And I said, well, man, you're going to have your fourth offensive four line coach in four years. And he, and he said, look, I mean, sometimes it takes a while, but sometimes it doesn't. You know, how the guys buy in. And one thing from talking to all the coaches, it sounds like the first meetings with these players have gone well. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like, you know, that I guess they met for the first time on Sunday. Uh, and then they've met a couple times since then. And it sounds like from talking to TJ Rushing and some of the other assistant coaches, they felt like they, this, this team, after all they've been through these last three or four years, 
is very welcoming to change. They're excited about the possibilities right. after all they've been through. How could they not be? I mean, is this exciting? Is six and seven exciting? Is 18 and 20? Is that really cutting it for you? You think they would be really open to change. And I thought Norvell made a good point when he was talking to us about um, when he's recruiting guys and he's, he's very straightforward with them. And he says, look, I'm going to be hard on you. It's not going to be easy. And, you know, he said some people ask him, well, are you worried about scaring kids away when, you, when you're that direct with them and tell them how hard it's going to be? He's like, well, no, I, I want if they're scared, I don't want them here. And I think that's going to be his approach with these with these. And by the way, Aslan gave a huge fist bump when he said that. Did he uh, stop? I think he, I think he stopped. The table. He smacked the table. Uh, <laughs> so, so I was like, Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, Aslan was very excited about that. But I think. It's going to be interesting to see how that translates to the players that are here because he's not going to be easy on them. He's not going to take it easy on them. And you would hope 18 and 20 would let them realize the way they've been doing it hasn't worked. So follow this guy's lead and see where it takes you. Yeah, and the cool thing about this experience was we got to talk to, I think we talked to probably every assistant coach. Uh, Michael Langston was out there as well. He talked to David Johnson, the new running backs coach and recruiting coordinator, try to get some of his philosophies on recruiting. Um, I think that'll be helpful. He'll have a post up on the premium recruiting board uh, that people can read as well. Some of his insights. Gene was there. Gene was uh, helping us video some of the interviews. Aslan was help there. Had a long interview with uh, Chris Thompson, mm -hmm. who's the uh, veteran, the veteran of the staff. I assume. not the former running back. No, not for Chris Florida Thompson. State. Chris, Chris Thompson, Thompson, right? Who's a tight ends coach. Actually coached Mike Norvell when he was a player and uh, now is on his staff and uh, so he talked about that transition and kind of knowing when he when he knew that Mike Norvell was going to be the kind of coach that could be at a school like Florida State. So to sum it up, we're going to have plenty of coverage coming at warchant.com over the next several days. Uh, the first thing up, as you said, the Alex Atkins story and video. Uh, then we'll also have the feature on Bruce Warwick, who's the uh, new chief of staff, and then we'll just be rolling it out over the next uh, week or so. So stay tuned rolling to warchant.com and uh, we'll have just eat up, Corey. <laughs> Stay tuned to WarChan.com. We'll have complete coverage all week. Thanks for uh, tuning in.